Alright, what's up guys? Simon from Brainvis.com. In today's video, I'm going to show you a new OLED display that I found. Uh, I've used OLED displays in the past, I really like them. Uh, they don't use a lot of power, they're pretty easy to use. And, uh, but the problem is, most of the time, they're pretty small. Uh, the one I've used before are under an inch in size. Uh, this one we're going to see today is 1.5 inch, and it's 128 by 128 resolution. So it's a perfect square which is pretty cool because it makes it very easy to change the orientation inside a project. So that's what we're going to look at today. So let's go see the code, then we're going to test it out and we'll be right back. All right, so here's the code we're going to use today. Uh, we're including a library to control the OLED. This library is called the U8G2 library. Um, I've used the UHG library uh, before in the past. This is a newer version and we're using this one because this OLED is fairly recent and only the uh, this version of the library supports it. So that's why we're using this one. Uh, then we're defining the switch pin. I'm using a tag switch to change the messages or the graphics that are being sent to the OLED and that's connected to pin 5 on the Arduino Mega. And then we have a variable here to keep track of how many times I've pressed the tag switch. Uh, now, the library has multiple modes, uh, meaning how to communicate with the OLED. The one we're going to look at today and we're using today is the frame buffer mode. Uh, this, uh, in fact, what it does is that it sends the whole 128 by 128 pixel from the Arduino to the OLED all at once. Uh, this has the advantage of being very fast, uh, but it uses a lot of RAM on the Arduino. So that's why I'm using Omega today. Um, in a future video, I'm going to show the page buffer uh, mode and the text only mode with this uh, library. Page buffer, uh, you can send text graphic, uses less RAM, but it's slower than the frame buffer mode. And the text only mode uses no RAM, uh, is very fast, but of course you can only send text, you can't use graphics. Uh, so we'll see those other two in an upcoming video. Uh, here's the declaration of the uh, library itself. Now, this setting here, as you can see, this one, uh, it's R0. R is for rotation of the display. So depending on how you install the display in your project, you might want to change this. The values are 0, 1, 2, or 3. And what that does is that it rotates the display, the picture on the display, 90 degrees. So you could play around with that here if you wanted to. Uh, then we have the main setup. So we're using an input pull-up on the tag switch. I've done a video on that if you want more information right here. And then we start the OLED and then we set the contrast, which is equal to the brightness, to 200. And the brightness setting goes from 0 to 255. So 200 is fairly bright. Uh, then we have a function here that actually puts text at the beginning every time we press the switch. Uh, and in different font size. So this is 11, 14, and it goes up to 25. And the message is always the same one. It's player one. So we'll see that when we do the testing. Uh, here we have the uh, BrainBus logo, uh, that's the graphic that we're going to display, and this is its uh, information here, the array. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to cut here, and I'm going to show you uh, how I created all this information that you see here. So let's go check that out, and we'll come right back. All right, so here's the logo we're going to use uh, to display on the OLED. I'm in Photoshop right now, but you could use another program like GIMP or something like that to create that bitmap. I'm just going to show you the settings. The mode is set to bitmap, so it's only black and white. And if I go to image size, uh, take a note of the 90 and 125. Uh, resolution doesn't matter, but we need these two numbers here in the code. We'll see that right after this. Uh, so now that this image is created, I'm saving it as a BMP file, and I'm going to import it in another program. So here's the other program I'm going to use, the LCD Image Converter. Let me show you the about. Uh, I've used this program before when I created the 16x16 LED matrix animation frame. Uh, so what I did here is that I just went file open, and chose the file, the BMP that we created in Photoshop. Now, once you have the uh, BMP loaded, you go into Image, Export, and you export it as an X11 bitmap, as you can see here, a .xbm. So I, ex I extracted it already, so let's open it right now. So there you go, I opened the file that was exported, and this is all the information. So this is the array that we're gonna use in the code itself. Uh, take a note of the 90 and 125. We're gonna need the height and the width to put in the code, and then copy all this stuff here. And uh, let's go back to the code and check it out. 
All right, so now we've seen how I created this array right here. So that's what it represents. So let me go down. All right, so now we get to the main loop. And the first thing I do, I check if I pressed the switch. Then I check the value of the variable. If it is uh, smaller or equal to five, I clear the buffer, meaning clear the display. I do the draw text function that we saw up there. Then I send the buffer, so that will display uh, stuff on the OLED. And then I increase the value of the variable. Now, if the variable is higher than five, then I do a clear buffer. And I use this command to draw the bitmap of the logo right here. This is the position x, y, and this is the size of the actual bitmap with the name of the array right here. And then I send the buffer, which will send the logo, and I reset the variable to one. So the next time I press the switch, it's gonna go back in here. And I have a little delay here of 50 just to debounce the switch. And that's it, that's the whole code. So let's upload that and see what happens. All right, so the code has been uploaded to the Mega. Uh, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna plug it in and we're gonna see what happens. So here we go. So the Mega is getting power, everything is ready to go. So I'm gonna press the switch to start the display. And there we go, we get our first message. Press again, a bigger font, and so on. There we go, all the way to the biggest font. And if you see some flickers, it has to do with the camera itself. In person, this is not flicker at all. Uh, and one more time, I'm gonna press, and here's the logo, the graphics, works very well. I'm gonna press it again, and we go back. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold the switch down, and as you can see, it refreshes very fast. Uh, keep in mind also that we have a delay of 50 millisecond in the code uh, to debounce the switch, so it could go even faster than this. Now, the uh, frame uh, buffer mode of the library is very fast, but it uses a lot of memory, and that's why I'm using the Mega right here, because this code wouldn't work with a Nuno or a Nano. Uh, so in a future tutorial, I'm going to look at the other modes that are available with the library, the page mode and the text only mode, and that I'm going to use a Uno or a Nano. So we'll see that in the future tutorial. Uh, so there you go, guys. This is a great OLED. It has a great size. It's square, 128 by 128. Uh, so you could rotate it any way you want in your project to fit your needs. Uh, so I really like this guy. It's not too expensive and it's very easy to work with. So hopefully you found this interesting. So let's go back to the main camera and wrap things up. All right, so that'll do it for today, guys. Hopefully you found this interesting. I'm probably gonna use this OLED a lot in my future projects. I got one coming up and uh, you're probably gonna see it again. Um, also, if you want more information about any of the tutorials that I do on YouTube, uh, check out my website. I have more information there with links to the libraries used. You can copy the code and stuff like that, so check that out. And uh, like always, if you like my videos, please subscribe, like, and all that cool stuff. And until next time, my name is Ivan, and I hope to catch you guys real soon. Take care.